Trolling law enforcement. What's your story? College town. Huge party. Excise cops are in town busting parties left and right. Ours gets busted. They proceed handing out tickets to underage drinkers. One kid gets a scrap piece of paper and folds it into the shape of the tickets the cops are handing out and sits on the front steps with his head in hands repeating. My parents are gonna frickin kill me. Cops just pass him right by. This kid will go far. When I was a senior in high school, we got a new vice principal from some inner city school who thought he was a real hard case. He would actually go around smelling kids fingers for the scent of weed. My buddy and I came back from lunch one day, both stone sober and heard Mr. Hard Case, I forget his real name, was coming out to the parking lot to check fingers. My friend looked at me, then wedged his right hand down the back of his pants into his butt crack. He left it there until we saw the VP coming our way, then pulled it out nonchalantly and we waited. Sure enough, the VP walked up and, in his usual threatening manner, told us to hold out our hands. I did. He smelled my fingers, then moved on to my friend. I could barely keep from losing it as he took a big sniff and then literally jumped backwards, yelling something about my friend needing to wash his dang hands. Needless to say, this ended the finger smelling technique at my high school. I knew where this story was going after the second sentence. I was speeding once, and I mean seriously speeding. I saw the lights come up behind me and freaked. I pulled over and noticed I had a bottle of water next to me. Took it and poured it all over my lap and put on the most embarrassed look I could. He asked if he knew why he pulled me and I responded I'm sorry officer. I really had to pee and was trying to get to the nearest restroom. But, innocent eyes, I peed myself. Something in me knew that this cop did not want me to touch his pen, his paper. Didn't want to touch my license, nothing. As far as he was concerned, I was just disgusting. He said well, next time, use the bathroom before you leave and slow it down, and let me go. Around 2am on a Saturday night I was pulled over for suspicion of DWI. I hadn't had a drop. They asked me to step out of the car and gave me a sobriety test. I passed with flying colors. They asked me if they could search the vehicle. I told them they could search the vehicle. With the sole exception of the center console, they would need a warrant for that. After several hours sitting roadside, they finally produced a warrant from a judge. The center console was empty. Whoa, wonder how they pulled off that warrant. Refusal of a search is not grounds for a search. This was about 10 years ago. My mother had a large plant in a plastic pot that died. I took the pot full of dirt and put it in the trunk of my car to replant something at my house. I forgot about it for a few weeks. I got pulled over for something. The cop asked, do you know why I pulled you over and I said, was it speeding? Or was it because of the pot in my trunk he got me out of the car and had me put my palms on the hood while I was searched? He opened the trunk and was not happy. I got chewed out for wasting his time and such and such. I noticed that not one single car passed, so it wasn't wasting too much of his time. I wouldn't be able to do that with a straight face, huh? I've never actually done this but always wanted to. Get 5 total friends together all wearing costumes. Dress up as a biker, construction worker, Indian, cowboy, and a GI. Then go to a public place where the police walk around, and just follow the cop around. Please do this soon. I refuted a police noise complaint with a decibel meter and a printout of the, the Boston Municipal Code on Noise Ordinance. The best kind of right is technically right. In my case, the cops trolled us. Huge house party. Once a year thing around Christmas. The famous pirate party. Lady wenches and naked dudes with eye patches everywhere. Drunk and freshmen as far as the eye can see. The cops are called, which we anticipated. They show up and it's two guys in their 30s. One is just tired, end of a long day and didn't really want to be dealing with the shit chow. The other was kind of amused by all the nautical debauchery. When two of the housemates, both over 21, go out to talk to the cops, the more serious cop just says look, just get some of these people out of here. We don't want a scene, so tell them all we won't arrest anyone. The other cop chimes in, with his very best pirate voice. Unless this 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 everyone cracks the frick up and clears out in a good mood. 
taking most of the drunken 18 year olds elsewhere. It was a few days before New Year's in the Bay Area's Chinatown. I was about 14 then and me and my group of friends would always walk from school to my house just to hang out and play video games. There were about 6 of us walking up this really steep hill to where I lived. When you have lived in the same area for over 10 years, you notice things that are unusual, out of place and just doesn't seem right. The strange thing I noticed was a guy, late 30s, with sunglasses on and a hat sitting in a white pickup truck reading a magazine. We were inside my apartment for about 30 minutes before we decided to go get some food. I saw the truck on the other corner and the guy spots us. He rolls down his window and yells do you guys have any fireworks for sale? I told him I couldn't hear him but I clearly heard him. He asked again I said do you guys have any fireworks for sale? I told him again that I couldn't hear him. All of a sudden, he makes a turn, goes down the hill and pulls right up to us. Do you guys have any fireworks for sale? I said nope and he goes I know you guys do. I'm not a cop so it's cool. I told him that it doesn't matter if he's a cop or not. We don't sell fireworks because it's illegal. He starts to get irritated and starts yelling at us at this point. Come on guys, stop being wussies. I just want to buy some fireworks for my kids. We are actually walking down the street with him slowly driving next to us asking. I told him one last time. I know you're a cop and you're just doing your job but honestly, we do not sell fireworks. And by the way, a cable car is coming. He goes so what? I told him because you're going down a narrow one way street with the cable car coming up the hill towards you. He literally shat his pants as he sees the cable turn the corner in full speed. He reverses as fast as he could, clipping a few cars on his way up the hill. A cop on top of the hill sees this and pulls the guy over. The dude gets out of his truck and pulls out his badge to show the other cop that he was undercover. My friend's story. He was smoking weed in high school with his best friend. Both dudes, they had to sneak away from their parents, so they smoked in one of their cars at a scenic outlook near Roanoke, VA. Sure enough officers found them in the car, but luckily they had already finished and put the weed away. When the officer asked my friend what he was doing up there, the officer suspected weed. My friend said that he was in love with the other guy and they were about to make out. Dang southern cop didn't know what hit him, so he just walked away. I'm surprised the cop didn't hit him. Not really trolling law enforcement, but here's the closest thing I have. Early in high school, maybe 15 years old, my friends and I are cutting through a church parking lot because there is a trail through the woods on the other side, leading from one friend's house to the others. We all notice the smell of burning weed while we're near this church, so we're looking around trying to figure out who is smoking. My friend sees someone move inside the church, it's like 1am at this point, pretty weird, and goes over to check it out. Soon enough there's 8 cop cars in the parking lot. As it turns out, someone had tried to break into this church the night before, and the pastor and his entire family were sleeping inside, in case they came back. They thought that was us. The cops just absolutely would not believe that we were just passing through, and smelled the same thing they surely did, and were just checking out the situation. They detained us for 60-90 minutes looking around the surrounding forestry for our bongs. One of the cops was going around to each entrance to the church, to check for signs of attempted entry. At the back door, he found a roach from a joint on a ledge right inside the church. Apparently, it was the pastor's daughter who had been lighting up right out back, and quickly put out the joint and left it there when she heard her dad yell because he saw us from the front. They wound up letting her off with a warning, and gave me and my three friends a ride for the one mile to where we were going, with their flashing lights on, which was pretty freaking cool when we were 15. I grew up in a small town, really small. The only way to have any form of entertainment was to drive 30 minutes to the next city to go to the movies, bowling, etc. It just so happened that on the highway halfway between the two cities there was a small town known for being a speed trap. The highway was out of the jurisdiction of the local police so what the marshal would do is hide in between overpasses to catch speeders, force them to pull over onto the frontage road, which was in his jurisdiction. Then he would claim an exaggerated speed. When people asked to see his radar, which is perfectly legal, he claimed that he didn't have to because it was illegal. Any claims reported to his superiors seemed to go ignored. 
until he ran into me. Over time my friends and I had timed his patrols and realized that he patrolled towards the end of the month. One night he had stopped a friend for excessive speeding. The officer claimed 92 in a 60 zone, which was BS, and then we knew something had to be done. The officer had taken his plate number and claimed to have seen it speeding many different times and we knew he would look out for it. So I decided to take my phone and rig it up to record the speedometer and get pulled over by the officer. It took a few tries but I managed to get pulled over by the same officer. For doing 70 and 60, that being a first time offense. After giving him my license he went on to claim that I was doing at least 85, and giving me the whole bit about how he cannot show me the radar, as well as giving me a ticket claiming it was a repeat offense and how I should be put into jail. All this being caught on my phone without him noticing. So a few days later I show up to the courthouse to pay the ticket and I managed to talk to the mayor of the town and showed him the video of all this. But thanks to me the officer got fired and I didn't have to pay a $400 ticket from a douchebag. That's not trolling, that's performing a public service. Downvoted for off topic. Just kidding. Good on ya. I work as a paramedic, and often the cops call us out to take someone that's drunk to the hospital. This is really stupid, because it just clogs up the ears and costs all kinds of people unnecessary money. Not to mention the fact that they only call us because they don't want the paperwork of taking someone to jail for such a stupid thing. So we get called out one night around midnight to some guy who had puked in the parking lot and was wobbly on his feet. He was pretty dang drunk. Nothing a good night's sleep wouldn't cure though. When we pulled up who was there but the butthole cop who wrote me a ticket the week before. I told my partner who this was and he took the lead the cop didn't recognize me. The cop gave us a quick rundown. We checked the guy out and then this happened. Partner, so what do you want me to do with him? Cop, take him to the hospital. Partner, why? There's no medical problem. Cop, we're concerned about alcohol poisoning. Partner, well I'm not, and I have more training than you. Cop, irritated, look, just take him. Partner, nah, we don't really operate like that. Cop, angrily, well he needs to go sober up. Partner, to patient, do you want to go to the hospital? Guy says no, see, I can't force him. Cop, yelling, well he can't stay here in the parking lot. Partner, pause, oh, I see the problem now. Cop, his face lightens up, yeah. Partner, yeah, he's your problem. We don't take drunks just for being drunk. Cop looks stunned then turns to me hoping for a different answer. Still doesn't recognize me. Me. Maybe you could just give him a ticket. Then the fire captain got in the cop's face and threatened to get his supervisors out to the scene to adjust the officer's attitude saying things like you don't talk to my medics like that. The fire department has that kind of clout out here. We left and I giggled for days afterward. Everybody loves the fire department. This really isn't trolling. More of a local police officer getting owned, but I am sure it would fit in here. I live right outside of my city's limits, which means I am right outside of the local police department's jurisdiction. In high school my friends and I would always hang out at my house, so one night we all decided to go to the local McDonald's to raid the dollar menu. We're riding through town not causing too much trouble. We get our feast and are heading back to my house when we realize there's a police officer following us. Now we were playing music loud enough for it to be heard but still quiet enough not to be noise pollution. We were also going a few miles over the speed limit like most people did. I guess the officer realized we were leaving the city limit and wanted to catch us before we got away. We were literally 100 feet away from the city limit sign and 400 feet from my driveway when he put on the sirens. Instead of pulling off of the road right there in traffic I just drive onto my driveway and the office pulls in right behind me. My friends and I get out of the car and the officer pulls his weapon and tells us to get on the ground. My mom and stepdad come running out of the house to straighten the officer out. Chaos ensues and the officer fires a warning shot. This scared the neighbors and they called the sheriff's office and asked for a unit to come. Now it turns out that the local police department and the sheriff's department really don't like each other. A sheriff soon shows up to respond to the neighbor's call and ends up ticketing the police officer for trespassing and disturbing the peace. My mother drives a jeep, which the top is off and off of. We pulled up in the fire lane out front of a bank, because my mother is kind of an idiot, and she ran inside to use the ATM. 
I was 15 at the time, and while she's inside a police officer walks up to the jeep, sticks his head in the driver's side window, and says is this your vehicle son to which I replied yes. I sometimes like to park in illegal places and sit in my own passenger seat. He didn't say a word, stood back, crossed his arms and just glared at me. My mom came out about 10 seconds later. He took a look at her and said have a nice day mom, and walked away. He probably felt like your mom having to put up with your smart butt all the time was punishment enough. <laughs> Junior year of college all of my roommates and I were 21 years of age. I was the only one with a car so I was the one who always had to go on beer runs. You can say I look a bit underage for my age and I drove a sportier car. So within the first month of buying alcohol from this one place I got pulled over 4 times, not kidding. After leaving the liquor store, I noticed they had no reason to pull me over except the fact that I looked under 21. The cops did play legally I guess by following me until I did something stupid or noticed something wrong with my car. License plate light out, took a right turn into the second lane, side view mirror was broken. Rolling stop right turn on a red light. They made me do a sobriety test once on our busy college street. I got a lot of honks. Well after completely inspecting my car I went out again to purchase alcohol. No surprise. I was being followed by cops when I left. I knew that if I drove perfectly they could not pull me over. I drove around the block for about 15 minutes and I was shocked they were still following me. I eventually hoped onto the highway, got off, and then back on. After about 40 minutes of charades I was getting thirsty and missing the pregum so I pulled into my driveway. The cops followed me, waited till I opened my trunk and ran in and asked to see my id for the liquor. I pulled it out with a big grin and they got in their cars and left. I never got pulled over again, maybe because they finally realized, hey this dumb boss is 21. The police, always doing important things to protect America. In the city I live in, you need to purchase a license to work in public spaces the street. A few weeks ago, I was walking through a pedestrian zone, where a man was playing the violin and I stopped by to listen. Sure enough, within a minute two policemen showed up and asked him for his license. Of course he didn't have one, so they started taking his information to give him a fine. That's when an old lady started talking to me really loudly about how that's a shame and I answered something along the line of, they are right to stop him. What would become of the world if everybody just started to play music on the street? People might start dancing. This goes on for about 5 minutes. The lady and me standing about 3 feet from the police and maybe 20 people stopped and were watching. Everyone else walking by is smirking. It was a good feeling when I heard, you know what, we're gonna let you go this time. Make sure to buy our license. So it's the 1st of August in Switzerland, same as 4th of July in the US. A few years ago, my friends and I, we drink and watch the fireworks, and then drink some more. At some point, there's three of us left, we mount our bicycles and drive down the hill back into town. Completely wasted, without light, singing. So a cop car flashes the blue lights when we approach, really fast. Friend number one drives into the bushes on the right side of the street and hides there, completely mad. My friend and I, we don't react and come to a standstill in front of the police vehicle. Two cops get out, I will never forget what follows. The litany by the cops, dark, no light, driving in the middle of the road, endangering ourselves and other people, was to be expected. My friend nods, nods says yeah yeah and then one officer asks him why he doesn't have a bicycle bell mandatory in switzerland at that point i am doing the math in my head no light wrong direction no bell the alcohol we are looking at several hundred dollar sign if we're not lucky my friend gets angry and points at a rubber giraffe on his handlebar officer i do have a bicycle bell squeezes the thing and it makes this ridiculous squeaky noise the cop gets angry and says Sir, this is no bell, don't be silly, my friend gets more agitated, says it's even louder than a standard bell and works just fine, squeezing, squeezing, squeezing the thing to prove his point, at this point, I completely lose it, I cannot help myself, I am dying from laughing, and I can't stop, even though the cop gets angrier by the second, my friend continues to squeeze the stupid rubber giraffe, repeating, this is even better than a bell, sir. Then he starts laughing uncontrollably. 
2. At this moment, my other friend, why, he doesn't know himself, decides to leave his hiding place just 15 meters across the road. He shoots out of the bushes, pedaling madly downhill, and falls on his butt, the bike flying away. He does this sort of somersault, rolls downhill fast, gets to his feet, and runs like heck. The cops watch this spectacle incredulously. We continue laughing, tears flowing down our cheeks. No way to stop. Who is that? The cops ask, now not sure if they should follow my other friend or keep on with the two of us. The only answer they get, more laughter. At which point, and by now, we are totally sure that this is going to be the most expensive night ever. Their radio goes off. Some car accident. The look at us. At each other. Helplessly. Get in the car. And drive away. We. Laughing and singing. And squeaking the stupid giraffe. Drive on. No ticket. No nothing. I am an attorney. And a client was complaining about being followed by the cops every time he was in town. I met him at his house. And I drove his car one Saturday night. Sure enough. About 5 minutes later, a local cop started following me. I made 20 plus turns, all legal, and the cop followed me in every turn. He quit following me when I pulled into my office parking lot, but I waved as he drove by. I told the client to jar a different car, and his problems stopped with bulls traffic stops. I told the district attorney what I did, and I got better plea offers for cases where cops were being dongs. Relevant username. Keep it up, for all of us. A story my troll did likes to tell is from when he was in dental school at USC in the 70s. The street right next to the building with the dental labs is a really long block, so a lot of people just cross in the middle of the street instead of going to a street light. There used to be a cop who would write a lot of jaywalking tickets to people who would do that. My dad and his friends would make giant water balloon launchers using surgical tubing, and would launch water balloons they made from dental gloves at the cop. Once. He saw where they were launching from, but he couldn't get into the building because he didn't have the proper security codes. Dental hijinks is a topic yet untapped. I frequently take photos in public. Not really a troll, but still awesome. When I was in college I would take an empty soda can and cut the top and bottom off and put a slit down the side and slip in a beer can. This worked so well that my friends and I could openly drink outside on the quad and safety had no idea. I was shocked it worked so well. One of the safety officers actually warned me that drinking too much Mountain Dew was bad for you. I thanked him for the advice, trying to contain laughter. I wasn't sure if they knew or not at this point, but I found out for sure when my buddy was busted going to her party. He had six beers in his backpack, but one was in a sleeve. He was in trouble for five of them, but when they returned the pack it had the soda in there. It was pretty gratifying to have them give back a full beer. I read this twice, trying to figure out how the beer bottle would be fully covered, before realizing that beer comes in cans. I am retarded. There's a bike path where I live that has a posted 15 miles per hour speed limit for cyclists. One time a slightly overweight policeman actually sat on the trail with a radar gun and caught me going well over the limit. I managed to maneuver past him on the trail and he immediately mounted his mountain bike and began chasing me. Because I was riding a road bike, and was in much better shape than him, there was no chance of him catching me. I actually toyed with him a little, letting him catch up a little every now and then. I like to look at cops in their cars and then run off at full speed for no apparent reason. In New York City at least, that would have no chance of an amusing outcome unless you are white. Did you keep the change? No, she took the $11 back as soon as we walked outside. Surprised they didn't come and arrest you guys for obstruction or whatever excuse they'd use for shouting out warnings. I was home from university on a break a few years ago. My room was mostly as it was, sometimes it was used as a guest bed. It had a lock and deadbolt on it. My brother has shady friends. I guess one of these shady friends was on parole, and he was staying with us for a day or two. The probation officer, I don't quite know his title, he wasn't a real cop, busts into my house as I'm getting ready for work one morning and starts moving around without saying anything. I am freaked out, because there is obviously an aggressive presence in my house. 
There's a knock on my door and I hear this guy ordering me to come out slowly with my hands up. I remember slowly unlocking and opening the door, and blocking it with my foot. I told him he couldn't come in without a warrant. The dude he was looking for was not living here, etc. He demands to search my room. I tell him to go frick himself. He didn't have a firearm or a badge, just a lime in it, or anything. He notices the massive horde of booze in my room and starts demanding to know if it's mine, how old I am, wants my driver's license, etc. At this point I am massively pee. I slam the door in his face, relock it, get dressed. I then step out, preventing him from getting past me into my room, and claim that all the liquor in the house is mine. Some of it was definitely my underage brother's friends. I have no idea what I was thinking, but I told him if he wanted proof of my age in my own freaking house, he could show explain to me his PC or show me a warrant or maybe just get the frick out. I go to call my grandmother and he tells me I can't. I don't remember what I said, but I definitely called. He booked it before she showed up with real police. TL. DR. I ruined some butthole probation officer's bust because he basically broke into my freaking house. In retrospect, very nearly could have been charged with a lot of crap for being a dong. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I felt so violated that I lost most of my sense. I walked over to a police van, drunk, knocked on their window and once they opened it I, with a very serious and informative look said, excuse me sir, your window is open. Then I walked back to my friends. The police came after me and took me to the police station, but let's not get into that. Got arrested after walking out of a bar when I was 18 with a six pack. Cops said the only way I wouldn't be charged was if I would walk back in the bar in a couple weeks, with a recording device, and buy another six pack, probably putting the bar out of business. I agreed. Walked into the bar, asked for a six pack and when the bartender looked me in the eyes I just shook my head at him and mouthed in oh 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 oh. He ID'd me told me to get the frick out. Cops get nothing. I didn't get charged. I got pulled over for riding with no helmet by bicycle cops. One guy, one lady, a few years back. I knew all the bylaws regarding this quite well for my city. If your religion would prevent you from wearing a helmet, you don't have to. Seeks and such. A male cop. Do you know why I stopped you? Me. You think I'm cute and want to ask me out? Female cop. Suppressed laughter. MC. Instantly in my face demanding it and that I dismount. Me. Well officer. Since I don't need a license to operate this vehicle. I left my wallet at home today. Clearly a wallet sized bulge in my pocket. MC. Well I need your name. Dob. And address. You're being ticketed for bicycling without a helmet. Me. Actually, I can't wear a helmet as it violates my religion. As per bylaw blah blah that means there is no ticketable offense here. FC. Getting pee at me being a troll. Oh yeah? What is your religion? Me. You have no right to know that and are violating my civil rights by even asking. A back and forth ensued. I gave them my name and address. They grilled me about my bike to prove I hadn't stolen it. I referred them to the station which had a case file for my bike with name and serial number as it had been stolen previously. They still wrote out the ticket. I asked what the courtroom and station hours were today. I got their names and reported them for the violation. Pled not guilty. Fought the ticket. Had to move up a court level since I was making a chartered offense. Got cleared on my birthday 7 months later. My FB religion has been anti-helmetarian ever since. The only reason I had a problem with the helmet bylaw is that it was not being applied equally to everyone. So I never wore my helmet when I lived there. Nicely done. I hate the fickle laws as they relate to religion. I'm wearing my sweet butt fedora in my California driver's license photo. I was told at the Oakland DMV to take the hat off for the photo, but I simply stated that I wear my hat for religious reasons. Oh that's cool, bro was the response and my photo was taken. Years ago, 1990 to 1991 everyone used to hang out in the high school parking lot in the small town I lived in. We would sneak beer and smoke weed occasionally, just being teenagers. 
The police would come through once in a while with a German shepherd trained to sniff out weed. I always carried tennis balls in my truck and would pull one of them out and start bouncing it to distract the dog while my friends who had weed on them would wander off the lot. Eventually it got to the point where the dog would come straight to me to have me throw the tennis ball and I would engage in small talk with the officer. Again, while people I knew with weed wandered off. I miss the small towns back in the day where police didn't think everyone was a terrorist and a drug dealer from the start and you could actually have a conversation with them without getting tasered. Haha, <laughs> even police dogs are still dogs. Being black and upholding the law, they never expect it. On 4 stroke 20 this year, the cops were out all over campus. I was going to a friend's house to get royally fricked up, and two cops pulled out in front of me causing me to almost hit them. They proceeded to race each other down the road for a while. They both go to get into a turning lane at the same time and one cop hits the other. They stopped, after putting on their lights, and got out to check the damage. I pulled up next to them, rolled down my window and asked are you guys okay after they said that they were fine. I put on my best troll face and continued, do you need me to call the cops and sped off as the light turned green. They just glared at me until I was out of their view. You should have reported the accident to the police. Seriously. I live in Daytona Beach. During spring break, and other busy times of beach going, my friends and I would idle down the beach in my jeep with no doors or anything open along with the windshield down while smoking tobacco out of bongs and bowls and joints. Each one of the four of us would have some sort of apparatus in our hand while we looked beach patrol dead in the eye while driving by. We would get pulled over every freaking time. Then we would get our asses chewed out for distracting them from public safety. Aka preying on hot but 18 19 year old chicks for underage drinking. Whoa. The only four human beings in the universe who actually smoke tobacco out of water tobacco pipes. Racing to get my girlfriend at the time home before curfew. I am hauling butt down this windy mountain road. Make a turn. See a cop in a turnout. Said, well, crap and floored it. I know it will take him a few turns to catch me. So about one stroke four mile up the road I pull down a little known side street in the middle of a curve. Kill the engine and the lights and pray. About five seconds later, here comes the cop. Lights and sirens blaring. And thankfully, he shoots right past the road I was on. I found another route to get the girlfriend home. Just some good old boys, never meaning no harm. Urban legend. A guy is driving a Toyota MR2 and flies past an idling cop in his neighborhood. Cop gives chase. Guy makes a turn onto a small street pulls up to a house and tells the people in the driveway to just say he was there the whole time. Cop comes around the corner and catches up with him. Cop says don't move or you're resisting arrest. Guy says it wasn't me it was somebody else that just flew by. Cop calls BS. Guy tells cop it wasn't me. My car is off the engine isn't even warm. Cop puts hand on hood and sure enough it's cold. Confused cop mutters some stuff and drives off. The engine of the Toyota MR2 is in the back of the car. Not my story but a friend's. He was walking across campus with his backpack to a study group and a cop or campus security stopped him and started asking him all these questions about where he was going and what was in the bag etc. He decided to not let the cop see inside his bag and not tell him. The cop threatened him saying he was going to get a warrant. And finally he did. After about an hour of waiting the cop gets his warrant and looks inside the bag. Just books. It was 1972. My buddy at high school had a pound of pot in a backpack. Kids rarely had backpacks in 1972. So the vice principal, also a cop, asked him what was in the backpack. The VP's name. I kid you not, was Harry Bush, a pound of marijuana mister. Bush get out of here, was all he said to my pal. Good thing too, that pound cost $160. When I was about 17, a squirrel had torn a hole in the side of my parents house and was living in the attic. One day, I saw the squirrel come out of the attic and go onto the roof of the house. I quickly grabbed my Tipman 98 paintball gun, loaded up the hopper and chased after him. The squirrel went from the roof to a nearby tree branch, and I began shooting at him. 
He managed to dodge every single paintball, while my trees slowly changed color to a bright blue, over the 10 minute chase. I eventually ran out of ammo, and resigned myself to defeat, vowing revenge as I went back inside. I went back to my room and assembled my paintball gun back into its pieces. After about 15 more minutes of plotting my next move, I hear a very low knock on the door. Knock 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 knock. Police. Open up. I think to myself, what the f are the police doing here, as I go downstairs to open the door. As I open the door, I see 5 policemen standing on my porch, dressed in full SWAT gear, located in very strategic positions. Their guns are drawn in hand, and most of them are backed up against the wall of the porch. I turn and see one more policeman walking toward my backyard. The number of policemen was very strange because there were no police cars in sight. It was like they dropped out of the sky. While I'm standing there in shock, the closest policeman, with his gun drawn, and glancing down my hallway, asks me, is there anyone else in the house? My dad, but he's asleep. He works third shift. I answered. He then says, we got reports of someone shooting a rifle with a large scope. At that point I was afraid to laugh, so I just simply said, that was me, but it was a paintball gun. The look on the officer's faces when they heard this was priceless. He made me go and get the paintball gun to show him, and I explained the situation with the squirrel. At this point, my dad is still asleep, so I'm keeping the police outside. I look down the road and see that they parked about a block away. Also, three more officers came out of my backyard, four grand total of eight officers. One of them asked if I could put the gun together so he could shoot his buddy with it. He was pretty disappointed when I told him I was out of ammo, and the best part is my dad still doesn't know the SWAT team was at his house. Almost similar to your story, when I was underage the only thing to do around my town was go downtown with friends and drink root beers or Italian ices from the coffee house. One summer night my friends and I get a couple IBC bottles and walk back to our cars. Halfway there an unmarked jumps onto the sidewalk and a couple undercover cops get out. They are about to write citations for underage and open container when we inform them we're drinking root beer. They sheepishly stalk away and we ask repeatedly really? There isn't more pressing criminal matters at hand tonight. Small town America, where cops look for trouble and fabricate some if none can be found. My friend's family got ticketed twice for leaving their garage door open. They live in a nice neighborhood too. When I was 16 or 17 I would mow lawns for extra cash in the summer. One day I was driving back from mowing a smaller lawn. I had carried the push mower there in the trunk of my car but had left it there because I was mowing their neighbor's yard the next day. On my way home I got pulled over by a sheriff for going a little too fast and he asked me if I had anything in the car he needed to know about. I told him, with a smile, that I had some grass in the trunk. He pulled me out of my car. Slapped cuffs on me and opened the trunk to see some dried grass clippings from the mower. He was rather irritated. That is so freaking awesome. You sir, are a troll dude among troll babies. At my university, all two hour parking areas are monitored by meter maids who draw yellow chalk line on your tires every hour. So a third mark equals a marking ticket. Because of a lack of parking, we have to park in these areas and just move our car several times a day. Naturally, we have started carrying around damp rags, at first only wiping off the tires of our cars and those of our friends, but now we just wipe off every mark we see. It feels good man. My parents were intoxicated when I was conceived, they are both cops. Mission accomplished. Born a troll. When I was about 7 me and my neighbor used to put a lemonade stand up in front of my house and make some quick cash. There was a side street just down the road which was a good spot for cops to hide and shoot their radar guns at the passing cars. So on the front of our little operation we wrote on a large neon poster slow down there is a cop down the street. Also buy our lemonade 25c. Needless to say most of the drivers appreciated this and would buy our lemonade usually at 2-3 dollars a pop. We pulled in some nice cash and I would be able to purchase an exorbitant amount of N64 games. Friend of mine at a different high school found out that there was to be a drug dog sniffing lockers at his school. So him and a bunch of his friends all left bacon sandwiches in their lockers on the day it was coming. 
So my friend's brother got pulled over and as the cop was about to let them go the cop said something like anything else I should know about. Now he was driving an old butt car and it had a glove box he could never get open. So his response to the cop was whatever you do, don't look in the glove compartment. Needless to say he was pulled out of the car and the cop tried to get into glove box. He couldn't get into though so they had to call a locksmith. A hour later the locksmith finally gets the glove box open. The cop was thoroughly pee when he found nothing in the glove box and started yelling at my friend's brother. His response to the cops I told you not to look in there. Sorry for grammar I'm typing on my phone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.